it's a, a people, it's a community, it's a life, it's a heart, it's a spirit. Uh, parents of gay children say, I want my son, my gay son, to have the same opportunity to come to me and say, hey dad, I'm getting married, as my non-gay son or my non-gay daughter. The heck would you want a picture of a tattoo of a thousand dollars on your penis for? So you might just need to satisfy yourself sexually alone at that point. Do I regret it? Not one bit. Did I think that I would actually take it the next step and, and do it again? Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> and what goes into their life, how they handle it. There are 12 houses, and each one of those has, has a particular function. Look into yourself, think about it, and just be whoever it is that speaks to you. Hello and welcome to talk, Talking About. My name is John Griffith and today I have a rising singing sensation with me, Liz Clark. Welcome. Thank you. So, you're, you're pretty much all over the place these days, traveling a lot. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, good meeting a lot of interesting people and Definitely. Uh, taking them to new places and you know, just getting, getting your message out. Yeah, definitely. I've been, been all over just even in the last six months or something I've been in Ireland and England and wow. yeah um, all through the Midwest and I just went to Utah last week and you know it's been crazy so it's great so it's I mean a lot of good things are happening yeah a lot of success is coming your way I hope so yeah so, yeah but um that's that's the now yeah and every story has a beginning so I just, I just kind of want to start with yours okay um, so you you knew that you wanted to pursue music from from what age um, I guess I was about 12 when um, I found my dad's old guitar um, and he hadn't used it in years and it was in a closet and I was a giant Beatles fan and I decided I'd learn every Beatles song known to man. Oh, wow. And, um, and my dad, who kind of lost his dream of playing guitar, you know, he's <laughs> one of those guys that got a guitar and never <laughs> played it and realized his daughter could play it, he was the one who set up some gigs for me. He called up this Irish pub in Denver, from Denver, Colorado, and um, said, hi, I have a you know, 12-year-old daughter, <laughs> and he just wanted to drink, I think, but he <laughs> said, you know, can she come and play these gigs, and um, can she do an open mic, is what he asked first. So he said, well, you have to be there, because she is a minor, so we bring the whole family down. Okay. And, um, and I played about six songs, all originals at that point. And then they, the owner of that little bar said, well, will you come back every Tuesday and I'll pay you $15. Oh. And that was like, great, I am in the music <laughs> industry, you know. So. That's great. So that, that, this is at 12 years old? Yep. So that was it. And I've been playing gigs ever since. Uh, so were you completely self-taught? Yes. Well, I, I took piano lessons like every young, good girl should. Okay. And then once I discovered guitar, piano wasn't as cool anymore. Ah. Uh -huh. But now, piano is extremely cool, and I'm really glad that I got the lessons in. But, so I never got guitar lessons, but um, I'm way better at piano, and I love to have both instruments now on stage when I play. Okay. Yeah, so. See if I'd known that. A little bit earlier, I would have had a keyboard over here. Oh, well. Oh, well. Next I time, so you just, for, the, for that, you're just going to have to come back, because you are going to perform later on in the show. Yes, I am. Yeah. So. Okay, so. Well, there's there's a couple of years between 12 and now, at least yeah. two or three. Yes, at least two or three. <laughs> at least two or three. Okay, I'm 26. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess what happened is um, eventually I just played every place in Colorado that you could possibly play. Okay. And, um, and I was about 21 and just sort of really sick of living in the place that I grew up, as mm -hmm. most good 21-year-olds should. Right. and um, decided to move to New York City and kind of see what inspiration I could draw and see if I could mm. meet any many new contacts or you know, <laughs> anything like that. But so. Was that sort of a uh, little bit of a shock to the system, being a big fish in a little pond mm -hmm. to, to, to the, the cold streets of New York? I think so, <laughs> definitely. As it, it, yeah, but I think also I was just feeling like a rebel, and I, anything to get out of Colorado was... Mm was good at that okay. point. So I felt really cool to be in New York and, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was, it definitely was a shock and I had to just start working so hard. I was working at Guitar Center and working at, um, 
let's see, just like nightclubs, being the coat check girl, you know, <laughs> just like doing every job that you possibly could to just make rent happen and that kind of thing. Right, but playing all, all along. Definitely playing every everywhere I could play and making lots of friends. And now it's been um, five years since I've been here. Mm. So um, I've really made some wonderful friends and I love I love New York for all that. Mm. So. Through through all the, the changes in the move, um, was your style growing and evolving along the way? Yeah, definitely. I think once once you get into once you move into the little fish in a big pond, then mm. you get to see all the amazing talent that's out there and there's just a lot of a lot of heart and a lot of artistic personalities and a mm. lot of creativity in New York. So that's really inspiring. And in Colorado there are those people too, but there's just less of them and they're more, you know, working class kind of people and right. you know, so I, I definitely inspired by, by New York and mm. LA. Uh, if if you were to say put the the first recording that you were, to, you know, really enthusiastic about to, uh -huh. to something off the new album, uh -huh. uh, which we're gonna we're gonna go into more detail and discuss in just a second. Okay. Um, what what changes would you say have occurred in your style? Well, um, my first recording, I was probably about eighteen or something, and um, I didn't really know what I was doing in the studio. And I just had a couple friends that we were in a band, and we, you know, and I had little songs that I wrote, and you know, we had really cheap studio time and all that. So um, it's changed quite a lot, even just sonically, you know, mm. speaking. But I mean, but technology has changed as and well. And technology, yeah, and it's a lot easier to to record cheap now and have it sound really good. Mm. So, um, but so this CD um, actually has a. Um, has a producer that kind of comes in and helps um, just kind of hone in the songs and um, and there's just a higher level of musicianship and the musicians on there are good and mm. I've obviously grown as um, as an instrumentalist and a singer I would hope and um, but then also as a lyricist I think just once you get older you just begin to mm. pick up more more metaphors about life and you learn <laughs> things and get your heart broken and so yeah I would say I've probably grown a lot so and the disc is called pursuits it's called pursuit yeah and just um but well, I mean your own personal growth and where you are when you're writing and recording is in most artists it's reflected in the work yes yeah it's definitely autobiographical um, and this album um, I I feel like this is kind of like a, a melting of ice a little bit. Uh, the the album right before this um, was one called Hand Off the Stove or Hand on the Stove, and it had it was kind of a good defiant breakup album. You know okay. that everybody needs one of those <laughs> in their collection. And this one is sort of about falling in love again and kind of just letting letting more emotions come out and being being present with who you are now and being a little unsure and being okay with that and mm. you know kind of so it's a bit softer and a bit more I don't know lovely or something <laughs> <But> <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word to call it so that would probably indicate that you're at a similar place in your life where, yes. where things things are going well personally as well as professionally yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so that's that's always good that's yeah. always good right I mean yeah I, I love the defiant stuff and I love the feel-good stuff right and, and you know but I feel good is good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also though it's at a, it's at a point where um, where it's not comfortable to fall in love and give up a part of yourself. So that's a lot about what that album mm. is about, you know, too. So it's not all good, uh, but it's definitely, um, but you know, it just explores those feelings of what you have to give up to let your heart mm. feel more or something. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, <coughs> how difficult is it to to expose that? part of yourself to to an audience or or even mm -hmm. even in just in recording where it's you know a more limited audience but to get on stage and you know that it's revealing a part of yourself and just to right. to, to lay that bare before before a crowd right well I feel like um, I usually know that it's a it's a pretty good song if I feel a little embarrassed about revealing it to people and I think that's only because um, you don't often get to talk to people every day about your innermost feelings, and it's pretty vulnerable anyway. But if you're, 
but it is probably if it kind of clo cuts close to the skin in some way and it makes me feel a little bit vulnerable in that way it's probably pretty good because people don't get to do that that often right. I think people kind of react to that and even though I'm not talk, talking directly to them or singing directly to them, it's still people always know what I'm talking about. And they've had their own instances too. So. Right. Especially, yeah, it, yeah. If, if, if I can tell that you're telling the truth. The, exactly, yeah. Definitely. I think that's the biggest thing is if I'm, if I'm, if I'm so embarrassed almost because it is the truth, mm. that's the very best thing you could almost be, you know. Yeah. So, um, and again, you are touring a lot. So. Yeah. And in, in your travels, you've been interacting with more and more fans. Yeah. And what the, what are some of the unique fan experiences that you've you've mm. you've run into? Wow, um, I don't know. Sometimes there's good and bad. <laughs> but well, I'll just talk about some good. Just last weekend, I went to Southern Utah, mm -hmm. and in my mind, just a bunch of Mormons live there. And I thought it would be pretty conservative, and I, it ended up being one of the most stunningly beautiful places. And the people really reflected how beautiful it was. The surroundings were, mm. and um, you know, and I ended up the first night I got there, they they all had camper vans and stuff, <laughs> and we ended up drinking <laughs> three two beer, which I didn't even know what that was. But there's less alcohol, I guess, because it's such a conservative place. Okay, you can't get real <laughs> alcohol, kind of. So we just had like, you know, 19 three, two beers before you feel anything. <laughs> and it was like one of the weirdest experiences is all these people I'd never met before, but we're around a campfire and, you know, it was great though. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, I mean, it really sounds like a lot of fun. It was beautiful. And what's, what's one of the more odd experiences that you've had? Uh, odd experiences. Every now and then I get kind of um, like kind of a, a weird fan or something that's, <laughs> um, Oh, I don't know, because I don't want to sound mean, but, you know, when you can just tell a person is a little off or something, or, you Yeah, know. well, different can be good. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, right. No, I <laughs> love different. I love different, but sometimes... Um, sometimes different can be scary, too. Sometimes different can be a bit scary, or, you know, sometimes people will draw pictures, or um, sometimes people will get gifts, you know. Okay. And um, so I've gotten, like, one concert ticket. And they say, well, I have the other concert ticket, so, but I don't, I've never met them, so they want us to go together. Yes. Or, you know, gotten flowers, or those, that's nice, I guess. But um, one time I got a USB, like, uh, what is that? Those a little chips, drive? like a flash drive. And I open it up, and it's just like all these mocked together newspaper articles that probably were from Madonna or something, but somebody had like put, Liz Clark in there, <laughs> and I don't didn't I really still don't understand the purpose <laughs> of that, and it was just sort of given to me, and then run off, <laughs> and I'm kind of like, what, what what's that, you know? And it would say Liz Clark on David Letterman tonight or something, you know? Okay, well that can be that can be kind of fun. Yeah. Hey, so yeah. It's, it, just look at it as it was given in that spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So um, to, is is the the first single off the disc? out and getting a little bit of play now? Well, um, the actual, the release date Oops, is at I'll the end of this month, and um, and there is going to be a little radio play on it in um, college radio stations for, you know, starting about now for the next eight weeks or something. Okay. And um, so, yeah, I'd say if you have a college radio station that's around. Then okay, which song should they be requesting? They would be requesting. First, anyway, because I'm sure they're all going to be hot requests. Right, yeah. Eventually. They could request <laughs> um, a song called Feet on the Ground, Okay. <laughs> let's say, <laughs> if they liked it. But yeah, there's a couple, there are a couple places. Um, no, I, mean, I mean, when, when I first listened to it, I, yeah, I just, it took me away and oh, nice. I really enjoyed it a great deal. Thank you. So, and I'm much. sure the audience will also. Um, well, where can people find out a little bit more information? My website is a good place and that's lizclarkmusic.com. I okay. have no E on the end of Clark. Some okay. people do that. And I have a MySpace page, because a lot of people like MySpace. And that's um, myspace.com slash Liz Clark. Okay. And, well, we're, we have the www.talkingabout.info website. Um, this show is going to be posted up there. And right. those two links will be right below the show on the page. Great. So uh, when people visit your site, what, what kind of information can they find there? They can find when I'm playing next. And then I also have kind of a fun journal page where I put up blogs and random musings of my life from illustrations or 
whatever. Okay. Silly. Silly videos and stuff that I so do. So do you do most of the content on the site yourself? Is, is it all? I didn't much design it. Okay, um, but, but but yeah, yeah. I usually upload all the stuff, and you know, I'm pretty. Okay, in so so of it's really that. you, is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, especially the journal page, because okay. I can do that pretty easily. Um, so yeah, it is. Okay, so again, the website is LizClarkMusic.com and myspacecom slash LizClark. Okay. No music well. on that one. So check out our page, www.talkingabout.info. And again, through that, you can get to both of Liz's pages. Uh, and you're going to be performing for us in just a second. Yeah. So I'm going to thank you very much for being here. And we're going to have the audience just blink for a second in a moment. And Kay. then you'll be in the wink of an eye set up to yeah. perform. So thank Don't you go again. Anywhere. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Quick as a flash. Yeah. OK, be right back. Thank you. You're a knife, dear, and hot butter. We're out here shooting ducks on a pond. We work, dear, for one reason. Ain't no other place that we belong. I want to take you to a place where it's quiet. Sit back and watch the sun go down. It'd be so nice to get out of New York City. Finally find a place to just hang around. Not In my apartment, I call you up to say I miss your eyes. Two different time zones, two different countries. I go to bed while you watch the sunrise. I know it ain't quite a fairy tale, honey, but people still would kill for what we got. We'll settle down maybe outside in the country. Get through this, we'll come out on top. And I when you look, try to keep it down right. Keep it on the ground, keep it on the ground. Maybe I'm a rich man too. My feet are on the ground. Maybe we'll meet on the other side. Cause I just can't believe in the morning you put so much work in. At night you just go to sleep. a song called Break My Heart. Parking lot by the highway Smells like gas 
We've been drinking shots of whiskey. Ease your heart of glass. And brain answered brain. Heart answered heart. And tonight we're going home in separate cars and lean your world onto me. Ball your hands up beside me. Push your head into my neck and break my heart. There's a little place down the street we can go. I think it just opened up. Nobody will know us there. And you can tell me all your secrets. We'll know it's wrong. And tonight I'll go home and put them into a song and lean your world onto me. Ball your hands up beside me. Push your head into my neck and break my heart. Lean your world onto me and break my heart. Ball your hands up beside me and break my heart. Push your head into my neck and break my heart and break my heart So um, one more, I think I have time for one. Okay. Um, this one is called Underground. Your face, it's been out in the crowd. And I just want to single you out I'm up here putting on such a show That you see me when I'm finally home And I'll follow you Sometimes that's hard to say But I'll follow you the underground and if this is love that I found oh baby please don't throw me back to the underground Like I'm finally able to thank you for being someone so stable to brace me when I'm up there flying or choked up with my guts on the clothesline I'm not afraid sometimes that's hard to say but I'm not afraid Baby. 
baby, please don't throw me back to the underground. I've been chasing a dream so long. I've been riding up and down that stream. And I guess one thing that I never really told you was how lonely it all was. It's been hard times. We formed a bond since, and I think of you as somebody constant. And folks now seem to come and they go, but you're someone I'm just proud to know. The song is called Hard Times. Come home, long time away. Still, things still seem the same. What do I need? What do I need? Question, trying to hold it all in. Will I go back out there again? 